Fawn Tests Record Loop. made into an identical signal chain with the only thing changing being the device under test. The signal chain is a Sennheiser MD421 moving coil dynamic microphone in front of a 1961 Fender Super Amp feeding a 7th Circle Audio N72 mic preamp and a Lynx Aurora converter at 48 kHz sample rate, 24 bits. Now we will remove the back cover of the first unit under test, the authentic Klon Centaur, and measure the positions of the controls so that we can match all units as precisely as possible to the same settings. I'll notate all measured values in the description below. You may know that potentiometers, like most electronic components, exist within a tolerance range, typically 5% or 10%. This means that two perfectly good 10K linear potentiometers will generally measure a slightly differently from one another, just a percent or two, and we do notice that here, but the devices under test are actually pretty good. We were able to match them pretty closely. Next, we'll open up the Klon KTR. This is the later unit made by the original manufacturer that includes the original spec clipping diodes, obsolete parts that the manufacturer claims are extremely important to the sound of the unit and are very difficult to obtain now, if not impossible. Uh, as we open this unit, you'll see that there are considerable differences in every other respect in terms of how the unit is actually constructed. It relies on surface mount parts instead of the through-hole components of the earlier unit, which is perfectly fine, but it is a difference. After figuring out the pinout of the circuit board mount potentiometers used in the KTR, we're able to tweak and match pretty closely the settings to the original unit that we're testing. Then we do essentially the same process for the Seriatone Centura. After our measured calibration is complete, we can look at the physical position of the knobs on the different units and see that while they're pretty similar, they are slightly different. And this is why you don't want to rely on visual indexing of the knobs alone to match the devices for testing. The original clipping diodes used in the Klon Centaur and the early KTRs are out of production and essentially unavailable. As a result, Seriatone uses a substitute part with the same part number, 1N34A, and it looks very similar to a device that's available on eBay that's advertised as a new old stock West German 1N34A. I also purchased a different 1N34A made by ITT. It looks a little bit different, and as you'll see, it sounds a little bit different too. In order to facilitate testing of these different diodes without changing anything else about the unit, I installed sockets on the circuit board instead of soldering the parts directly to the board. This facilitates swapping out the parts without having to desolder and resolder anything or change anything else about the unit or any knob positions. And now the comparisons. <laughs> Thank you.
Now we'll perform some crude null testing to try and exaggerate some of the differences between the devices under test. Null testing works best in the digital domain where each playback of a given signal is reliably identical from one time to the next. In the analog domain, it's less reliably conclusive, but if conducted carefully, it can help outline some broad differences between one device and another. Our first step is to select a representative loop from each device under test and line up the start of each example to within one sample of accuracy. We'll then choose one device to use as our reference. In this case, we'll use the genuine silver Klon Centaur. And then one at a time, we'll invert polarity of the other devices under test so that one signal is essentially subtracted from the other, leaving only the difference. Once we've listened to the difference between all devices and the genuine original silver Centaur, we will then listen to the difference between the ITT diodes and the stock Seriotone diodes in the Centura.